today we, we're, we're beginning the month of October, and the theme for the month of October is prayer. Prayer is one of the essentials for us as believers to grow in the Lord. Is the essential right next to having the Bible in, at hand, right next to uh, devotional time with the Lord, next to fasting and believing God for miracles. So we are believing today that through prayer, all things are possible. Through prayer, all things are possible. It's not something that we do when we have time. We do this when we, because we depend on our communication with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and He is accessible to us. He makes us, He is available to us, of those of us who believe and declare the Word of God. If we come before Jesus, God will listen to our prayers. We got to believe in the power of prayer. And as servants of the Lord, if you consider yourself a servant of Jesus, communication with God is priority in your life. And we are called to be servants of the Lord. We're called to serve the Lord with all our mind, soul, and spirit. With everything that we are, we are called to serve King Jesus. In Isaiah chapter 42, if you can, turn with me there to Isaiah, the Old Testament prophet. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 1 through 9, it says, This is my servant. I strengthen him. This is my chosen one. I delight in him. I have put my spirit on him. He will bring justice to the nations. He will not cry out or shout or make his voice heard in the streets. He will not break a bruised reed. And he will not put out a smuggling wick. He will faithfully bring justice. He will not grow weary or be discouraged until he has established justice on earth. The coast and the islands will wait for his instruction. This is what God, the Lord, says, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes out of it, who gives breath to the people on it and spirit to those who walk on it. I am the Lord. I have called you for a righteous purpose. I will hold you by your hand. I will watch over you and I will appoint you to be a covenant for the people and a light to the nations in order to open blind eyes, to bring out prisoners from the gun, the, the dungeon and those sitting in darkness from the prison house. I am the Lord. That is my name. I will not give my glory to another or my praise to idols. The past event have indeed happened. Now I declare new events. I announce them to be before they occur. We're talking about the prophet Isaiah hundreds of years before the Messiah Jesus appears. The Old Testament is prophesying of the coming Messiah, which is, this is my servant. I strengthen him. This is my chosen. I delight in him. I have my spirit on him, and he will bring justice to the nations. Check this out. The prophet Isaiah is declaring the coming of the Lord, the the one he has chosen to come as a servant. This is hundreds of years prophesied of what's to come. I am with the chosen one. I will strengthen him. He will not grow weak. He is the one in whom the earth and everything that exists was created. They will, we will recognize. And check this out. He will not come shouting at first. He will come humble. And he will speak to those who need to be free in the name of the Lord. He's speaking about Jesus. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 9, beginning in verse 9, it says, 
And this is, we're jumping to the New Testament here. And Jesus is already doing miracles, signs, and wonders. And it says this, moving on from there, he entered their synagogue. There he saw a man who, was, who had a shriveled hand. And in order to accuse him, accuse him, they asked him, accuse him, they asked him, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? He replied to them, who among you, if had sheep that fall into the pit on the Sabbath, wouldn't take hold of it and lift it out? A person is worth far more than a sheep. So is it lawful to do what is good on the Sabbath? Then he told the man, stretch out your hand. So he stretched out, he stretched it out, and it was restored. This is Jesus doing a miracle on a Sabbath. He wasn't supposed to, according to Jewish law. As good as the other. But the Pharisees went out and plotted against him, how they might kill him. Jesus was aware of this and withdrew. He was aware that they were not happy. But, but the, the time of God, of Jesus, did not come yet. Large crowds followed him, and he healed them all. He warned them not to make him known. Check this out. He had to stay quiet. It had to be quiet. Imagine Jesus doing a miracle for you in our time, and you stay quiet about it. That's not going to happen. So that was, was spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Jesus is fulfilling the prophecy that Isaiah said. He said, it's not my time yet. So he withdrew, but he still healed. Stay quiet until the time is right. And here is Jesus declaring the Old Testament, the, the, the prophet Isaiah. Here is my servant whom I have chosen. He repeats it. My beloved in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him and he will proclaim justice to the nations. Jesus is declaring and declaring that I am the one the prophet Isaiah spoke about hundreds of years ago. And I am here now to declare who I am. I am God Almighty. This is powerful revelation. This is us knowing the Old Testament and the New Testament and Jesus coming to fulfill every single promise because God is not man to lie and he will fulfill everything he says he will do because he came as a servant obeying every, every command the Father has sent him to do. Call to serve with your life. You are called to serve with your life. Everything about us has to serve the Lord. God has always chosen man to partner up with him. From the very beginning with Adam and Eve to Moses, the judges, the prophets, the kings. God has always wanted to be, have partnership with man. With Adam and Eve, he says, you will manage this, 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 this garden. This is what you're called to do. Serve me. And we're working together. So as they're managing what God has given them, they're serving the Lord. In our time, servant is not a popular word. I, who's going to be a servant? Not me. Especially in the Western culture, where, which uh, slavery has been a, a not so good thing, as you know. But in the context of Scripture, when he calls us a servant, is of delight, is of joy, is I want to serve the Lord. I want to. There's a reward, and that's eternal relationship with the creator God that has always wanted to work in partnership with his creation, with humanity. You and I are extremely important to God. He wants to call us friend. And here we see that God calls us to serve us, to serve with our lives, not just on a Sunday, but that our lives reflect that we serve the Lord, that those around us know that we are servants of King Jesus, 
that those around us see with our speech that we're different. We're not like the rest. Why? Because God is doing a work in us that we cannot do on our own. This is the power of God living in us, us as his servants. In Exodus chapter 3, verse 10, Moses, this says here, when the Lord calls Moses, check this out. He's in the desert. He's hiding. He's fleeing from, from the Pharaoh. And here God calls him. And says, Moses, I have called you to set my people free. I've called you. Go back to Pharaoh. Go because I have chosen you to be my servant, to be my voice, to be my hands and my feet. Through you, Moses, I'm going to do great things. God could have done it all himself. But yet he chose to call us. So that we can be servants, so we can partake of God's creation, of God's purpose, of his plans being fulfilled here on earth. God called you, he called me, so we can serve him with great joy. Exodus chapter 3 verse 10, it says this, Therefore go, I am sending you to Pharaoh, so that you may, be, you may lead my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses asked God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and that I should bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He answered, I will certainly be with you. And this will be the sign to you that I am the one who sent you. When you bring the people out of Egypt, you will worship God at this mountain. Get this, he's giving Moses instructions, and Moses then asked the question, who am I? Have you ever asked that, yourself that question when God calls you to do something? He's like, and who am I? Who am I? Me? They're going to listen to me? I just started church. I just started opening up the Bible. I just learned what Isaiah was. And God is saying, I am calling you. I'm calling you servant. I'm calling you to be part of my purpose. I'm calling you to have an identity in me that when you walk, people know he is sent. She is sent. He is called by God to make the difference in this world. Don't take this for lightly. The creator God is calling us. The creator of heaven and the earth, of all that has breath. And he's calling us to be servants. Who am I? And God is saying, no, 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 no. I know who you are, but I want you to know who I am. I know who you are, and and you know who you are, but I'm going to give you the strength. I'm going to give you the will. I'm going to give you the purpose that you've been born with because I've called you even before you had a reason of thinking. You are my servant. The great I am is calling you. The people of Israel were serving under a system of sacrifice of animals and keeping of the law. This was impossible to maintain. It was a system that kept a a sacrifice for this, a sacrifice for that, and and, an atonement for this. And it was a constant reminder of you got to keep your salvation, guard it, protect it. The law is is long and it's rigorous rigorous and it's like, oh, it's difficult. But check this out. They were serving For their salvation. They were serving so that they can be saved. It was a constant reminder. It was heavy on on a human being. It's heavy and it's a constant thing. It's a reminder here and there. But they're working out their salvation for themselves. But there is good news. There is good news. Mark chapter 12 verse 28. One of the scribes approached And when he heard them debating and saw that Jesus answered them well, he asked him, he asked him, which command is the most important of all? They're asking Jesus about the commands, which were difficult and and difficult to keep. And Jesus answered, the most important is listen, Israel. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other command greater than these. 
He's making it a lot easier because the Lord is one. Then the scribe said to him, you are right, teacher. You have correctly said that he is one. There is one, no one else except him. And to love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, with all your strength, and to, and to love your neighbor as yourself is far more important than all the burnt offerings and sacrifices. It's far more important than all the sacrifices, than all the law, because in the Lord your God, in Jesus, it's all fulfilled. Love your God with all your might, soul, and spirit. With everything, be a servant of God. And number two, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Because when we love, we share. When we love, we're called to share of what God has done with us. And if we see people how God sees people, things are different. If we love God with all our mind, soul, and strength, he will show us how to love. And if we are Christians called believers in Christ and don't love, we got to check ourselves. Because God loves people. He died for our sins. He died because of love. Why? Because he came to serve the Father and said yes to the Lord, to, to, to the Father, and saying, I will die. I will give my life so that my, your creation will have life and life in abundance. You and I, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, we are saved by the grace of God. We are saved by the blood of the Lamb. And he came as a servant in obedience unto God. To, to, to do what? To rescue us from the grips of death and sin. It's far greater than burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And no one dared to question him any longer. Check this out. Jesus tells this man, you got the revelation. You understand it. You believe it. You are close to the kingdom. I want you to know that if today you're sitting here believing this truth, you today, my friend, are closer to the kingdom than you know. You're closer to God than you know. If you believe what this man just said and repeated of Jesus, believing with all your heart that everything is fulfilled in Christ, you are closer to the kingdom than you know. The kingdom of God is near, and we believe it because that revelation has been given to us as a gift from God. Receive the gift of God to open up your eyes and believe and know, I serve King Jesus. I love the Lord, and I love his people. Why? Because those are the greatest commands of all. He Love God, love his people. Now, instead of serving God out of a system of sacrifice, now serving from a place of security in our God, Jesus. We're now not serving to obtain salvation and oh, I've got to be good. No, 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 no. We are now servants of the Lord because of what Jesus has done for us. And we come into a delight as we serve the Lord. It should not be a burden. It should not be like, oh, again. Well, really? I got to work. You know, I got up early this morning. Six in the morning. I got to go to work. I got to put the kids to sleep. I got to do this. I got to do the laundry. I got to, do you know the thing? And God, you're calling me. Yes, God is calling you to put everything to the side. To put, leave everything to the side. Yes, be responsible. But when God calls, he becomes priority. When God calls, he becomes priority. Be the salt and light of the earth. Put God first. Honor him with all your heart, mind, and soul. So now we serve out of a place of gratitude. A, a place of thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the life you've given me. Thank you for the revelation, Holy Spirit. Thank you for opening up my eyes. You know that many people still can't see the truth of who Jesus is. 
And so our job is for, to pray for those that don't believe, that their eyes may be open, that they may see the revelation of who Jesus truly is. We are privileged. If you today are sitting here believing that Jesus Christ died for you on the cross, that there's only life and life and abundance in him, and he is the only way, truth, and life into heaven, that is a revelation given by God, not by man. That is God opening up your spirit spirit to believe and see him as who he is as the king of kings and the lord of lords and our job then to continue to pray and spread the good news of salvation for those that don't believe may the holy spirit open up their eyes because he's using me to declare the good news of salvation god is calling you to be a servant here i am lord do as you please serve god serve god Jesus came as a servant king, servant king Jesus. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 11 through 15. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 11 through 15. But Christ has appeared as a high priest of the good things that have come in the greater and the more perfect tabernacle, not made by hands. This is not of this creation. He entered the most holy place once for all time, not by the blood of goats or, ca or calves and calves, but by his own blood, having obtained eternal redemption. For if, if the blood of the goat and the bulls and the ashes of young cows sprinkled those who are defiled, sanctify for the purification of the flesh, how much more would the blood of Christ, whom through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, cleanse our consciousness <laughs> from dead works so that we can serve the living God? Therefore, he is the mediator of a new covenant. Come on, somebody. There's a new covenant. There's a new pact. There's a new way. So that those who are called might receive the promise of the eternal inheritance because a death has taken place for redemption from the transgressions committed under the first covenant. He came to redeem. The blood of the lamb is the one that covers a multitude of sins. We are covered under the blood of the lamb. Somebody give God some praise. Somebody give God some praise. Why? Because that is the truth. It's not by the sacrifices of animals any longer. It is the one and last sacrifice, the lamb of God. His name is Jesus. We're under that covering. We're under the covenant, the pact of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, from a servant to friend. We're going from being a servant to a friend. John chapter 15, verse 9. It says this, as the Father has loved me, I have also loved you. Church, I want, I want you to take this serious. Remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, in my love. Just as I've kept my father's command, this is Jesus, just as I have kept the father's command and remain in his love, I have told you these things so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. This is my command. Love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down his life for his friends. Somebody say, hmm. Jesus laid down his life for who? His friends. There's no separation. God is all the way up there, and I'm all the way down here. No, no, no. Jesus now calls us friends. You are my friends. If you do what I command you, I do not call you servants anymore because a servant does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything I have heard from my father. 
I want you to know that when you, when you start a relationship, it begins with a, hello, my name is, right? Hello, my name is. And then it grows from there if that relationship is going to grow. And the more you get to know the person, the more they share. The deeper they become, it becomes. The relationship grows. You're not friends. You're acquaintance. Acquaintance. You, you know the person. You've seen them. You know who they are. But you don't know, know them. True? That takes time. And so Jesus spent time with his disciples teaching them what he's heard the Father saying and speaking. And the more they grew in relationship, the more they opened up to God, to Jesus, the more they became friends. Jesus sent them. They did what Jesus said. But the more they, they knew about Jesus, the more they, the more they knew, there came a point that he asked them, who do you say that I am? You are the son of God. There's no question about that. Ah, now you're ready for deeper things. When we grow in relationship with God, we become servants first. We obey you. But your relationship grows and the more shared. I want you to know that God has revealed his deepest revelations to us because he calls us friends. The fact that you're receiving the truth of who God is and your mind is opening up and your spirit is becoming hungry for the word of God, it is because your relationship in, with Jesus is growing deeper and deeper and God shares his deepest thoughts and intimacy with his friends. I don't want you to miss this because today you will understand that you're going from being a servant to being a friend because God will begin to reveal his deepest thoughts because if you want to go deeper, God is ready to go deeper because he loves relationship and we have always been called to live in relationship and be partners with God. The deeper you spend time with God, the more he reveals the more time you spend with a person you're trying to get to know, the more the person reveals. You see how applicable that is? God wants to be close with his creation. God wants to be close with you. And in the name of Jesus, I come against all spirit that is trying to cover your ears in this moment. And may your spiritual ears be opened by the power of the blood of the Lamb. May your spirit receive this word. And I come against all demonic forces trying to distract you from this powerful word of God this moment. Because he's called you and set you free. You are called to be a servant. You are called to be a friend of God. No matter what you have gone through, God is calling you. The Holy Spirit empowers us to be faithful to God. How can I be faithful to God? Through the power of the Holy Spirit. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord is one. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The God, God is one. The Lord is one. And we believe in the Father. We believe in the Son, and we believe in the powerful Holy Spirit. Why? Because Jesus says, I will send you the Holy Spirit. I will go and send the Holy Spirit to lead you into all truth. And this is the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives today. For the Holy Spirit empowers you. I wonder if there are people here that know that you have a call from God. But your circumstances, your sin, your addiction, your insecurities are limiting you from really taking that step of faith and giving God your very best. You may be feeling oppressed spiritually. You may have doubt and anxiety. You may feel like the darkness of the devil is upon you. But if you know that God is calling you to serve, I want to say in the name of Jesus, may those chains be broken now in the powerful name of Jesus because you are called to serve the Lord with everything. 
You're called to serve under the power of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 1, verse 4 through 8, it says, While he was with them, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for the Father's promise, promise, which he said, You have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but you will baptize, be baptized with the Holy Spirit in a few days. So when they came together, they asked him, Lord, are you restoring the kingdom of Israel at this time? <laughs> he said to them, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. But how will we do this? How will we remain faithful? How will we reach the ends of the world? By the power of the Holy Spirit. Don't think when the enemy comes your way and you ask like Moses, but who am I? No, no, no. The Holy Spirit reminds you, I am the one who's sending you. The Holy Spirit is going to remind you, no, no, it's not about you. Don't forget. It is about the power that lives in you. I am with you. And that is the Holy Spirit speaking to you. Allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Whenever you feel like doubt, confusion, I shouldn't do, shouldn't do that, I want you to know, let the Holy Spirit speak louder than your doubts and confusion. Let the Holy Spirit truly speak to you, and he will not leave you to shame. He will put the right words in your mouth. You know your boy needs that word. You know your girl needs that word. Don't hold back. Allow the Holy Spirit to use you. Oh, pastor, what if they fire me at work? God got you. God got you. Because he is with you. Allow God to use you for the glory of his name. Dads, Moms, I'm going to target the dads for now. Speak life over your children. God has called you as a servant, as the head of the house. Speak life into your home. Speak life into your wife. Speak life into your children. God has called you to serve your family and serve them well. Be the difference. Don't try to save the world when your home is... Hmm. Focus. God has called you to be a light. Women, wives, stand up in the name of Jesus in, in prayer, believing that God is with you. No matter the doubt and confusions that come, the trials and tribulations, stand firm in the Lord. There's a word that God is putting in your life. There's a word that God is putting in your heart. God is not, has, hasn't just made you beautiful on the inside on the outside, but God is working something on the inside of you that has power, and that is the power of the Holy Spirit. Maintain that, that intimacy with God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus.